David Lowe, the CEO of Quirky. David Lowe is with us, founder and CEO of Quirky. Founder and CEO of Quirky, David Lowe. Always knew in the back of my mind that this was the big business. Quirky is an interesting concept. Attracting like uh, entrepreneurs, digital nomads, and creatives. Although my accent doesn't uh, give it away, I'm now an American. Now let's get your accent out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Having a vision that's so big that you need help. You need a team. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Lydia Isnanto channel and right now I am in the San Francisco with amazing human being. His name is Dave Lowe. He is the founder and the CEO of Quirky, That's which correct. is the co-living community for like-minded people. You're going to launch Quirky next year, early next year in 2018. We're looking at summer 2018 launch. Yes. In San Diego. In San Diego, yes. Not San Francisco, but it's the Not other, San the other Francisco. sand, the other sand. So you're just visiting for three days. Yes, we've been asked to speak at the CoLive conference yes. um, tomorrow, actually, but we've uh, we've come in today, um, and it was about an eight-hour drive from right. San Diego this morning. We got up at 3 a.m., so it's uh, we're a little wow. bit, a little bit sleepy, but um, yeah, we love it. Good, great energy here in, in yeah. San Francisco. and uh, Thank you yeah. so much for your time, willing to be here and share your stories for the audience from Lydia Isnanto channel. <laughs> Thank you for having me on as a guest. First question is, yeah. what is actually Quirky? Well, Quirky, um, as you beautifully put it um, earlier on, is a co-living community for like-minded yeah. people. And what does that mean? Um, well, we see um, an opportunity to get entrepreneurs, digital nomads, creatives, um, especially together in uh, the same place, living together, and, uh, and and the reason for that is so that they can kind of collaborate, uh, get all of their great minds together, and um, work on projects together, and be better connected um, as human beings. So, from Quirky, your pilot before, mm -hmm. um, is there any business has start? You know, like from discussion or like from anything. Well, we set a challenge to the entrepreneurs in the house and we said, you know, if we gave you, I think it was a thousand dollars to solve a problem, you know, in the city um, or, or just, you know, if there's an issue that you saw um, that needed to be addressed, what could you use that capital for? And how would you, how'd you start a business with very little startup capital? There were two people who had their own businesses and they both came up with like a way of using their own businesses to combine and start another business and at the end of that it was kind of like wow you guys you know you should you should absolutely look at that as an actual business to try and launch and then they kind of went away and started working on it those kind of things were happening very quickly that was happening within 24 hours uh, but we saw also that that the house that we were using and the eight entrepreneurs that were in there it was too small and the demand was too high and so that's why we're kind of now looking at, um, you know, building a bigger community to house all of these brilliant people that... And you have been building this for two years, three years? Um, I would say, well, it's been in my mind since about 2001, maybe. But I would say probably the last year and a half, I've been really researching it. And very recently, I just went to Europe for three weeks to go to five different countries and visit different co-living communities to learn from them and stay with them and just kind of make friends and yeah learn about co-living how did that idea came from of you building such an amazing place entrepreneurs come together and then they start building something out of a strangers and where did that passion came from it came from a personal frustration so i i moved to london um, in 2001 and i went i kind of did the corporate thing for a little while um, and I got to the point where I knew I wanted to launch my own business, um, but I just didn't know where to start. And the city was so big and everyone was everywhere. And so I started going to networking events and then um, I was kind of taking my entrepreneurial idea, ideas home to my roommates and they were all like bartenders and marketing people. So they were all sort of, you know, very, well, very, very different people. And they didn't understand what I was going through. Uh, trying to get a business off the ground on my own. They said, you're crazy, Why? who do you think you are, Richard Branson? And so that's kind of, you know, that that was the mentality I found um, over there. And so I just had this kind of desire, I guess, to be in a, in a living environment with people like me. That was the simplest kind of way of thinking. And, and I went through, because I, because I felt very disconnected from entrepreneurs um, in a living environment, especially, 
um, and I didn't have that emotional support system. I went through kind of periods of depression in London and then I suddenly had this kind of moment where I thought co-living is, and this is almost before co-living was a thing um, and even before co-working, I just thought this co-living needs to be in the city and it's something that I desperately needed. Eventually I got to the point where I was like, I'm, I want to leave London and move to the US and become an entrepreneur and try things over here and it's, things, have got a, things have got much better in the US. And obviously, um, well, I saw I exited my first business um, earlier this year, um, and so I can now focus on Quirky like 100%, and um, and finally realise this vision. Well, my dad ran his own business successfully for about 30 years before he sold it, so I think that was where the idea of running my own business came from. But then, um, my dad had taken over that business and run it successfully, whereas I wanted to start my own. So I was getting frustrated with uh, maybe industries and, and I thought I could do better at that and started thinking, why am I thinking like that? You know, is it, is it because I'm just kind of you know, frustrated with things or angry? And then I thought, no, that's my entrepreneurial kind of uh, something inside calling that's saying, you know, listen to those thoughts. That, that's, you can, if you're frustrated with something, you know, instead of complaining about it, try and create a solution to that problem. And that was when the idea of, of building businesses um, came to me. If there is one advice you would like to give for the audience who are currently have the visions, but there is a lot of struggle. So what advice you would give us uh, according to your experience? Number one, apply to Quirky. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Quirky. Number one. Uh, number two, I think the best, one of the best things that's happened to me so far in my entrepreneurial let's say career or journey having a vision that's so big that you need help realizing there that you need a co-founder and you need advisors and you need help and you need you need to you need a team i'm more you know brand media interviews uh design community layout like aesthetic whereas max is kind of you know he's he went to mit so he's a tech genius and he's he's CTO and so he's developing some incredible tech and so I can kind of say to him hey this is either something I've imagined can you create it and he goes yeah that's easy I'll have it by tomorrow um, or he comes up with an idea and I say that's brilliant we've got to do it and then we get excited getting a team getting getting a support network like an emotional support network but also um, people who can help you get to where you need to get to. That's the biggest thing. Because if you just do it on your own, which is kind of what I did with Uberpong, which is my first startup, it's very easy to kind of just be isolated and go to coffee shops, but still be isolated, go to co-working spaces, still be in your bubble, and not stretch yourself. And I think when you've got two people and you've got a team, it's like, you are not just accountable to yourself as a leader, but you're accountable to the team. So guys, if you're interested in uh, building your own business, number one, go to Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because number two, you need a co-founder. I mean, you need a yes. team basically. So yeah. find the right people, get involved with the like-minded people. And if you have a chance, please come to San Diego to Quirky. I was going to say, we're, we're on social media, uh, yeah. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Quirky Co-Living, and uh, we've got a YouTube channel, but just search for us on YouTube, yeah, and you'll find us just Quirky Co-Living again. So guys, don't be uh, discouraged because you can see this human being is so energetic all the time. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, ciao. Thanks, Lydia. Thanks, guys. <laughs> up top, <Okay>. up top. <laughs>